Our look back at the 1998 Championships begins at the men's 25, where Christine Minto, secretary of the North Midlands DC and former 24-hour record holder, was celebrating her 57th birthday by timing the event on her local roads at Randy in North Nottinghamshire, where Dave Dungworth reigned supreme in the 1960s. A surprisingly early starter was the former 10-mile record holder, Matt Illingworth, as a fine Sunday morning promised some fast times in this Rutland CC promotion. Illingworth had taken the bronze medal in the 10th behind Rob Hales and John Clay, making it a team bright 1-2-3 with a new competition record aggregate of 57-24. Illingworth set an incredible early target with a personal best time of 50-03. Two minutes behind him, former BBAR Gethin Butler was beavering away in his usual style. Despite preferring the longer distances and with minimal early season training, the reigning 12-hour champion clocked a satisfactory 52-42. Next came the 1989 World Pro Pursuit Champion, Colin Sturgis, his comeback to the sport now in full flow. Ten years after he set a 10-mile comp record of 1848, the Team Brightman clocked a personal best of 50-46 to go into second place behind Illingworth. Sturgis had already caught his minute man, Derwent Valley's Neil Payton, yet he was destined to clock 55-48, beating younger brother Brian, who got a ride as one of the reserves by almost a minute. Here's a brief shot of former junior BVAR Brett Harwood on his way to a slightly disappointing 56-28. But behind him, another former record holder, Dave Aikham, the first man ever to do a sub-20 minute 10 back in 1980 before a successful professional career in Italy. He was going well and clocked a satisfying 52.25 as the temperature warmed up to produce near-perfect conditions along this popular stretch of the A1. Former double hill climb champion Joe Woff, now a veteran of 45, was enjoying himself in his new guru colours. The man who lost the 1976 milk race to his Great Britain teammate Bill Nixon by just three seconds was on his way to a time of 55-56, not bad after being so grievously injured in an accident that curtailed his career some years ago. Behind him, another speedy veteran was Jeff Platts, winner of the 100 title in 1994. The Colville Wheeler produced a 52.36, which was ultimately the fastest ride of the day for an over 40. And just look at the smoothness of Platt's style. No upper body movement at all, just the legs producing the power, an object lesson to many younger riders. Talking of younger riders, this is 23 years old Chris Ball, the 1992 Junior BBAR and Junior 25 champion. The Harrods rider was going well here, his halfway time was 21st fastest, but a puncture in the second half spelt the end of his efforts for the day. Markham Moor roundabout is the first turn on this version of what was for many years known as the O2 and heading towards it here is the team clean rider, Tim Stevens. It's 20 years since Tim was the Junior 25 champion and record holder, and he's been winning events ever since. On this occasion, however, he had to settle for a 53-28, ultimately a modest 21st on what was clearly an excellent morning, especially for spectators, including several of the national committee. At number 60 came the 1990 BBAR Gary Dighton, already the fastest man of the year so far with a 49-12. But despite the advantage in start time over Illingworth, he could only manage a 52-52, just slotting in behind Platts and Butler. Yet another former junior champion, Julian Ramsbottom, was on his way to a good time of 52-33. 
But elsewhere, meanwhile, the reigning BBAR Kevin Dawson had missed his start, been forced to wait for a space, then clocked a terrific 51.49 actual time, which sadly for him goes down in the record books as a 55.32, including his late start penalty. Now to John Clay, the surprise winner of the 10 in 1997. Another team bright man, he was going well, as he had done in this year's 10. His eventual time was an excellent 50-16, a personal best, and he was now in second place behind teammate Illingworth, with Rob Hales and Chris Newton still to come, as well as the defending champion, Stuart Dangerfield. Five minutes behind Clay was Guru's John Rickards. The speedy northeasterner appeared to be going well, but not that well, and his time of 53.24 was only good enough for an eventual 19th place. Heading north along the A1 towards the second turn at Blythe, this is Team Clean's Richard Preble. Twice the 25 champion, with a win at 10 miles and 50 miles as well, Preble was almost back to his best after taking a year out, and his effort here produced a good time of 51.38. Ultimately, though, good enough for eighth place. This is Birchfield's Darren Willits, a consistent performer in recent years, but he was destined to be caught and dropped by Preble on his way to a disappointing 54-54. But now to the 10 champion for the third time, Rob Hales, and just look at the power showing through. Strangely, on an unseeded mark, he was 21 seconds faster than Illingworth at halfway and stormed round the second half to clock a staggering 49-1, a personal best that looked unbeatable, especially when Dangerfield went through halfway some 29 seconds slower and Newton was a further seven seconds adrift. The multi-track champion was clearly on course for a 10 and 25 mile double. And there's a man who knows all about winning, Dave Lloyd. He took this title in 82 and 83 and set competition records at 10 miles in 81 and 50 miles in 83. And all that with a congenital heart defect that cut short a promising professional career on the continent. Meanwhile, Leo's Adam Hardy was making slightly heavy weather of this superb morning on his way to a 54-12, which would put him eventually down in 28th place. But three minutes behind him and destined to catch him near the end was the former Tour de France stage winner and yellow jersey holder, Sean Yates, who won the championship way back in 1980. Now the reigning 50 champion was heading for a time faster than his title-winning ride of 18 years ago. It was to be a 50-43, breaking up the Team Bright domination, but only fast enough for an ultimate sixth place. Just five minutes ahead of defending champion Dangerfield came Bright's Chris Newton, silver medalist 12 months earlier. He was slightly down on Illingworth at halfway and over half a minute behind the flying Rob Hales. But he too was now travelling well, even in the light southeasterly wind which had sprung up. Here, he's just about to catch one of the reserve riders, Alan West of the promoting club, with about four miles to go. His time, a terrific personal best of 49.45, put him into second place and gave Bright a new team competition record. Here's another of Newton's victims, Adrian Sylvester of Mid Shropshire Wheelers. No slouch either, this man. He still managed a 53-49 to claim 22nd place. But now to the defending champion, Dangerfield. The former junior BBAR had found himself 29 seconds down on Hales at halfway. In fact, he was fourth fastest at that point behind Illingworth and Newton, but he was fighting hard. Straining all the way to the end, he succeeded in overhauling Illingworth, but his time of 49.47 meant he had to settle for a bronze medal on this occasion. Rob Hales had followed up his 10 title by taking the 25 as well.